Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Teamer Adventure Breach combo deck built around the 2-man enchantment Underworld Breach which has been making the rounds in older formats. A little bit trickier to break this one in standard but that's not gonna stop me from trying. So Underworld Breach says each non-land card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to the card's mana cost plus we also have to exile three other cards from our graveyard. So if we have a nicely stocked graveyard, we can potentially cast quite a few spells out of our graveyard using our Breach. But at the beginning of our end step, we have to sacrifice Underworld Breach. So we only get one turn of casting extra cards from our graveyard. So there's a few constraints when building around Underworld Breach. First off, we need to fill the graveyard so we can fuel escape. That's not too difficult since we have a lot of ways of filling the graveyard in standard. In this deck, we have Merfolk Secret Keeper, Emery and Taimyo that all help us fill the graveyard. Now the second constraint is having enough mana so that when we play Underworld Breach we can cast a lot of spells in the same turn and that's a little bit more difficult to achieve since in uh, older formats you will often see Breach paired with ritual effects or ways of generating extra mana on the cheap but in standard we don't really have those options. Sure we have mana creatures but we want to be able to cast our mana generating spells out of the graveyard as well so we can potentially combo kill the opponent in the same turn that we do play the Underworld Breach. So that's where the Rose Thorn Acolyte comes in. The Seasonal Ritual Sorcery Adventure adds one mana of any color. Now by itself this doesn't actually generate extra mana, it just filters our mana. But once we add a few copies of Lucky Clover and start doubling up on the adventure, we can potentially start netting additional mana. And if we combine that with a lot of ways of self-milling and then the Underworld Breach, we can potentially go through our entire deck in the same turn and eventually win by playing a Thassa's Oracle with an empty library. So that's the basic gist of what our deck is trying to accomplish. So let's take a look at our entire deck list here. At one mana we've got the full play set of Merfolk Secret Keeper. We often want to wait until we have a Lucky Clover in play before we use the Venture Deeper Adventure to mill ourselves for four cards. And every now and then you might also use Merfolk Secret Keeper to mill the opponent out. If uh, somehow the Thassa's Oracle goes missing from our library, we can still potentially win by milling the opponent. And then we also have the plan of potentially just beating down with adventure creatures, which is another plan this deck potentially has if the combo doesn't work out. Then at 2 mana we've got our 1 of copy of Thassa's Oracle, which we don't really want to draw in this deck since we only want to play it once our library is empty to win the game. Could potentially get discarded and that's fine since we can still play it with Underworld Breach. But if it gets exiled out of our hand with let's say an Agonizing Remorse, then we have to switch to our backup plans since then the Thassa's Oracle win is not going to happen. But as I've said we can potentially mill the opponent out with Secret Keepers and Lucky Clovers, or we can just start beating down with our adventure creatures Brazen Borrower and Beanstalk Giant. Then we have the full playset of Underworld Breach. We only really need one to combo off, but we want to increase our chances of drawing one. And if we happen to mill it, we can potentially still get it back from the graveyard using Tamiya. So even if we mill all the copies, we can still potentially get access to it. Then the full playset of Lucky Clover, which might be one of the most important cards in the deck besides Underworld Breach. And then we also have the full playset of Brazen Borrower, which can also use the adventure alongside Lucky Clover to buy ourselves a lot of time by returning a non-land permanent an opponent controls to its owner's hand. And then later we can also get access to the 3-1 flyer to maybe pressure opposing planeswalkers or trade off for opposing flyers. But in this deck we're actually not very interested in casting the creature half of our adventures. We're even omitting the innkeeper in this deck even though we have a lot of adventure creatures. Just because we're only interested in the adventure half for our combo purposes. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Emery, Lurker of the Loch. Which is a nice way to also get back Lucky Clover from the graveyard if we happened to mill it. And then also just puts 4 cards in our graveyard. Which is good for fueling our Underworld Breach. Then we've got our four copies of Rose Thorn Acolyte, which of course we can keep in our hands, but is also fine if we mill it, since we can still cast the adventure half out of our graveyard with Underworld Breach. Then we also have two copies of Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, which is a great card by itself and is super synergistic in our deck, since it helps us put additional lands into play, which is great for generating more mana for the Underworld Breach combo turn, but it also can escape very easily out of our graveyard, exiling five other cards for double green and double blue, giving us access to a nice 6-6 with the repeatable draw and put lands into play ability. 
So Uro is also a nice backup plan in case a combo doesn't work out. And with all the self-milling, we will easily get access to Uro over the course of a game. And then we also have the full playset of Beanstalk Giant. We're mostly interested in the Fertile Footsteps Adventure, which is great in combination with a Lucky Clover. Can go turn 2, Lucky Clover, turn 3, Adventure, the Fertile Footsteps, and put 2 lands into play, which also come into play untapped. So we can still use those to do additional things. So the Adventure here is great to help us ramp and generate more mana. And it's also the reason why we're playing so many basic lands in the deck, so we can still search them up later with the adventure and then if the uh, mill plan or the combo plan doesn't work out we can also just cast a beanstalk giant as a giant creature to help us close out the game and then last but not least we have the full playset of tamio collector of tales which is also a very nice card in this deck as the plus one helps us fill the graveyard and we can also look for specific combo pieces that we might be missing like lucky clovers or underworld breach and then later we can also use a minus ability to maybe get back a key combo piece that we already milled in the graveyard if we just want access to it right away. And then looking at our mana base, we've got a lot of basics to search up with our Beanstalk Giant and uh, not a lot of mountains since those are a bit of a nombo with Uro. So we've got four islands, one mountain, four forests, and then a lot of dual lands to round out the mana base for Steam Vents, for Stomping Ground, for Breeding Pool, and for Temple of Mystery. And we're not playing Fabled Passage, even though it would be nice to fuel Escape, since in the mid to late game, after we've milled ourselves a bunch, we could easily run out of basics to search up with the Fabled Passage, so it wouldn't be the most reliable land in the deck. But I could see a version running more basics that uh, could run Fabled Passage as well if you rework the mana base. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw. Hands not great, pretty slow here. These Emery's costing three mana, but uh, yeah, I mean, if we get lucky with Emery, maybe find some Clovers, then this hand could work out. Turn to Paradise Roots. Don't need more Emery's. Chromatic Lantern, so maybe some sort of five color Niv Mizzet deck. Who knows? Just gonna play Emery. No clover so far. Can always play another Emery and then keep the original one so it doesn't have summoning sickness to maybe be able to uh, play a clover out of the graveyard. Although that's not relevant if we only have four mana, but once we have five, I guess uh, that could happen. Plain white celebration making a bunch of 2 2 citizens, alright? Fair enough. So now what? Adventure the Beanstalk, play Temple. It's not an exciting turn. But I don't see many better options. Plain White Celebration, a pretty good combo with uh, Nissa, since you can proliferate to help you ultimate faster. I'm fine trading Emery for Paradise Roots, since we've got a backup. Just want to stem the bleeding. Finding an Uro here could also buy us a lot of time. Alright, and there's a Clover. So I can play that, play a discounted Emery, and take it from there. Alright, so we're still missing like a Merfolk Secret Keeper in the graveyard to really mill ourselves for a lot. But we might be able to do something next turn. There's Nyssa. So yeah, I'm not getting another turn here. So... I think I keep Emery in case we mill a Lucky Clover. And then just take 11 down to 1.
Another Acolyte. So... Yeah, step one, play Underworld Breach. And then... I need to mill myself more. So Emery is probably the most mana efficient way to do it. And then keep the original Emery. Let's see, I could also Beanstalk, but only with one Clover in place, so... It costs me one mana to do so, which doesn't seem worth it. So we'll play Emery. Keep the original one. Alright, there's another Clover. So I can use Emery to play the Clover. So we'll cast it without escape. Now my Acolyte makes 3 mana. I guess we had one in hand too, start there. At least one green, four extra Acolytes, and then a bunch of blue. Escape. At least one green. The rest can be blue. And then Secret Keeper, mill for 12. Proper sequencing was probably milling myself first and then making additional mana. But the only card I care about here is the Thassa's Oracle staying in the graveyard. Mill some more. Need to find another acolyte here. There we go. Fourteen cards remaining, ten cards remaining. Acolyte to make more mana. And I think if we just make all blue mana, we should get there. Although I guess I'll make one green just to be sure. So I can play one mana Emery. Mills for four. And then can mill myself with the Secret Keeper. Alright, I think we got there. Now, of course, one of the downside of escape creatures is that if you use the adventure, the creature goes to uh, exile instead of ending up in your graveyard again. So you can't reuse the same Secret Keeper. But uh, yeah, that's the constraint we have to work with. And play Oracle. And win the game. Sweet. Well, we needed to top deck something. And yeah, we managed to get there just in time. We had just enough mana to pull off uh, all our combos here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Don't think we can keep this. Double breach is a bit redundant, and then uh, not much else going on. This is much better. This is close to the ideal opening hand. I guess missing like a beanstalk giant. But I do have to put one card back, which is a tricky decision. Could bottom the Tamiyo, 
could bottom the breach, hoping to get another one along the way. Don't think I want to bottom a lance, secret keeper or clover. So maybe it's a Tamiyo, although this hand also needs to find maybe some additional combo pieces. In which case Tamiyo is the more useful tool. And we are on the play with a secret keeper to protect Tamiyo, so maybe I'll bottom the breach and hope to get another one at some point. Opponent on band, and yeah, we drew another breach, so that worked out. Could be a gross peril here for my opponent. Maybe a Dovin's Veto. Brazen Borrower bouncing Clover. Well, it's a little bit too late, we still get the uh, additional copy. And then I'll probably just replay Clover. Another Clover in the graveyard in case we find Emery, or we could get it back with Tamyo. And I could use Acolyte to ramp out Tamyo if we miss a land drop next turn. Teferi can bounce Clover. Yeah, I'll just play Tamyo, and then what do we name? Could also just minus to get back Clover. Could plus naming, let's say, Beanstalk Giant or Emery, or just go for Merfolk Secret Keeper once again. All those are reasonable options. Think I'm just going for Secret Keeper. And then next turn I might double Clover after minusing Tamiyo, or we can keep plussing. Don't worry, I got this. Opponent passes with a bunch of mana. Could also adventure the Beanstalk, play Clover, keep plussing Tamiyo. Could also minus Tamiyo on a land here, which is also not unreasonable, although then the Borrower could finish off Tamiyo, which is our main concern. So I think I start by adventuring the Beanstalk, and if they counter this, I might get back a land. Because then Tamiya won't be under pressure from the Brazen Borrower. Because I just want to develop my mana here. And then play Clover. See if that resolves. Right, they're just going to flash in the Borrower. And then I'll... Probably just plus Tamiyo, even if they Nissa, Tamiyo should survive. And what do we name? Secret Keeper again, probably. I think you will find, my note. Right, find an Uro. Could also be good here. Right, so there's Nissa. They can hit Tamiyo down to one. That's why I didn't really want to minus time you last turn. Trust me, Even though play. getting that second clover is pretty important. Next turn they will be able to minus the fairy. They might minus on Uro if we get that back. Which is also a pretty strong play. Do not harm my scrolls. So I think I'm still looking for secret keepers. Or I could plus naming lucky clover, but we don't have a ton of adventures to go with it. Possible that naming Emery is better, but I don't expect Emery to stick around to get back Clover from the graveyard. Alright, so a bit of a miss. Play Uro. Emery's not bad. So 
So we've got 23 cards remaining. Teferi gets to minus, probably on Uro. And then hopefully nothing too bad happens. Don't know if we'll be able to win next turn. Probably gonna be a little bit short, depending on the interaction. But it's not impossible. This looks like a big Hydroid Crisis. So I don't know if we'll get another turn. So I might have to go for the combo next turn. Do we have any secret keepers in the graveyards? We don't, just another Emery. Could use Brazen Borrower to maybe do some stuff. Interesting, they did not minus the fairy. So we do get an extra draw from Uro. I think I'm fine suicide attacking Uro. I could also breach and get back Brazen Borrower to bounce some stuff. Maybe clear path for Uro to kill the fairy. Although I guess Borrower doesn't bounce the land. I think I just want to card and try to combo this turn. Alright, there's a Secret Keeper, that's great. So the chances of going off successfully have increased. So we'll start by getting back Clover. Make some mana. And then we'll start with Secret Keeper. Nine cards left, so yeah, I think we got there. Can just play Thassa's Oracle next to. And our point stepped out, so. Sweet managed to beat Band, the Fairies, and Nissals onto the next one. All right, we're on the play with uh, a reasonable hand. Turn two Borrower for interaction. Turn three Uro, and we've got the Breach for later. All right, turn one Mountain. The Mono Red deck is a pretty tough matchup for the deck, so don't expect to win this one, but uh, we'll try. So I don't think I'll need to Brazen Borrower here, especially when we need to pay two life for it. So I'll just play Tapped. Because bouncing a 1-drop here is not super exciting. Alright, so Uro. Wouldn't mind finding some lands. Uro is definitely the main way we have to beat the red deck. Just try and put a lot of cards in our graveyard quickly, escape Uro, and hopefully that uh, buys us enough time. Turn 3, Annex. That one I wouldn't mind bouncing with the Brazen Borrower. So I guess my turn is going to be double Brazen Borrower, which is not super exciting. Phoenix, so I guess we'll bounce both. Okay. 
this is a situation where we kind of want the Brazen Borrower to end up in the graveyard to fuel escape instead of going to exile. Probably play Tamio plus naming Lucky Clover. And that helps fill the graveyard for escape, which is kind of the main thing. Could also plus naming a card that's not in our deck if we just want all the cards to end up in the graveyard. But I still wouldn't mind drawing a Clover, especially with another Borrower in hand. Well, now that the red decks are playing more of these three mana creatures, Brazen Borrower is pretty good interaction. Before when they had more one drops and maybe Cavalcade, Brazen Borrower would not have been as impressive. If they have an Infuriate or a Shock, they could take out Tamio. And that uh, may be the case. You could use some manners. So Shock takes out Tamio. But we can escape Uro, which is what matters here. That Stomping Ground was a pretty good draw. Right, there's our Clover. Uro in play is definitely a big deal. Amber Cleave could still do a lot of damage here. But next turn we could go Clover plus Brazen Borrower, bounce two more things. So let's do that. And I kind of want to bounce the Steamkin instead of the Phoenix to limit their options. And well, opponent just scoops it up. Uro attacking is too much. We were pretty far from comboing here. Still needed to find a Secret Keeper to start milling ourselves to help fuel the Underworld Breach. But yeah, Uro is definitely the best way our deck has to potentially beat the red deck and Brazen Borrower for interaction. So we definitely drew the right cards for that specific matchup. But more often than not, I expect to get crushed by the red deck, especially the versions with more one drops. But uh, I'll take it, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and a nice opening hand, double clover plus beanstalk. So I'm definitely gonna hold the venture deeper until after we play the clover. So next turn I might just adventure the Beanstalks and then play second Clover instead of waiting until we get both Clovers in play. Since that's a bit more mana efficient. Although I could also just go Clover and then venture deeper, maybe that's still fine. Yeah, I guess that's fine too. And then if we mill more Clovers, Emery can get them back. We've got Breach in hand already. So we also just want to mill more uh, Rose Thorn Acolytes to generate mana. And we've got two in the graveyard already, so... Yeah, we could combo pretty soon, although Banishing Light is going to set us back a little bit. So for now, we'll just Beanstalk... And then get a forest. Not a ton of basics left. And there's another clover in the graveyard, that's great. Deputy. Well, that could have gotten rid of multiple clovers at once, gets rid of Emery. So they've got a lot of removal for the clovers, which is unfortunate. Although backup Emery, I guess it's worth it to play Emery, because it's way more consistent to combo off once we have more than one Clover in play. A single Clover... I would have to do some math here to figure out if we can get there. So if I Breach, we have access to... 
a lot of acolytes, so we can make a lot of mana. Uh, there's one secret keeper which mills for eight. I feel like I can afford to wait another turn. Although there is a chance we could completely combo off this turn if we get lucky with the secret keeper mills. But I don't think it's deterministic. Alright, there's another secret keeper, so now I think we should be uh, in the clear to go next turn. Unless they interact more. Guard mage is fine. Alright, perfect. So let's get back Clover. Play that. And I'm probably not going to narrate too much here, because timing out is definitely a risk. We'll make some more mana. And we don't really need access to red mana, so just blue and green should suffice. Have to be a little bit careful that we don't accidentally cast the creature half of our adventures. There's the Thassa's Oracle. We've got 14 cards left. So here's another Secret Keeper. Brazen Borrower could also... Bounce all the opponent stuff, and yeah, my opponent sees it riding on the wall. We had more mill effects here that we could play. And even, I think, just playing the Thassa's Oracle, we might have had enough blue devotion in play to just uh, win on the spot. Alright, sweet, so we managed to pull off the combo, thanks to our lucky clovers. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, what looks like a keepable hand. Probably just play Temple of Mystery, and on turn 2 I could venture deeper and play Secret Keeper in the same turn. And it also fuels our escape for Uro. Steam vents, I'm fine keeping. So we'll have the mana for an escaped Uro. Turn one Grazer. So another ramp deck. Yeah. I guess I'll just play Shockland Tapped, since there's no real point in having the 0-4 in play against this opponent's. Castle Garenbrig. And an Uro. Alright. Could see in this on next turn. Fable Passage also land that would be nice in our deck to help fuel escape, but of course we easily run out of basics between the Beanstalk Giant and the Self Mill, so Passage also has a lot of downsides. So, need one more card in Graveyard before we can escape Uro, but Taimyo will help there. Hopefully no turn 3 Nissa. It's gonna be an Ilea instead, okay. So, time for Taimyo. 
I guess I could play the Secret Keeper 2 here. Just in case. And then I'm probably digging towards Lucky Clover here. Bunch of Acolytes go to the graveyard, that's good. So, yeah, we might just be a Lucky Clover or two away from comboing. Dried of Elysian Grove. Not our time, yo. I think we still keep plussing for Clover. I think you will find my still nothing. Let's escape. And then we can Brazen Borrower to bounce something if needed. Alright, there's Nyssa. Nylia turns into a creature. That's fine. I guess they haven't plus Nyssa yet, so I can just bounce Nyssa here before they get to. Seems fine. And then Uro can block Nylia just fine. And there's Clover. Would definitely like another one. There's none in the graveyards. So if I Clover now and Breach. I don't know if we'll get there. Would feel a lot better about having a second Clover. I guess I can attack here. And maybe we'll draw one. Secret Keeper's not bad. Could also play another Tamio and uh, plus here naming Clover. Because, yeah, we're not dead next turn, so I have a, a little bit more time to set up here, I think. So, yeah, let's time your naming Clover once again. Every story is an opportunity for new Let me aid your research. Alright, so 25 cards remaining. Probably play the Clover. They could have an Agent of Treachery, which would make this bad. But saving the mana seems relevant. And then probably pass a turn. What I could have also done was play Clover, mill myself with Secret Keeper, and then maybe I could minus time you to find Clover. But uh, this seems fine. And then I think I'll hold the Secret Keeper in case we do find a second Clover. So we can uh, mill for a little bit more. So it's going to be Nyssa. They've got one card left in hand. And it's not enough in the graveyard to escape Uro. But of course they can start activating Nylea to find more action. So unfortunately Tamiyo is going down. But I'll jump Nylea just to put an extra card in the graveyard to help with escape.
Alright, so we need to combo this turn pretty much. I'll attack with Uro just to get an extra card. And then uh, start milling. So the last three clovers are all hiding at the uh, bottom here. All right, play breach. So we have a lot of mana thanks to all these acolytes. Start with a venture deeper. And there's an extra clover, although at this point we probably don't even need the clover, but I'll play it, because why not? And exile some of these cards we no longer need. Make some mana. And then, I guess we can just go double Emery. Or I guess just play Thassa's Oracle right now, since we have uh, three blue Devotion opponents tapped out. So where's Oracle? Here it is. So yeah, it's possible I maybe could have been able to combo off the turn before, but uh, since we weren't under any significant pressure, it seemed fine to just take the extra turn to set up even more and uh, make sure we could get there. Alright, so the deck performed quite well today, definitely exceeded my expectations, probably ran pretty hot to uh, win all those games. But uh, yeah, this might be the best approach to an Underworld Breach deck. So if you want to jank some people out with Underworld Breach in standard, this might be the best deck for you. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.